Welcome to the Everyone's a Critic 1993 podcast. I'm your host, Sean Patrick. With me is Amy Kay. Hiya! And MJ. Hello! MJ, what movie did we just watch? We watched Children of the Corn 2, The Final Sacrifice. (laughs) Had you ever seen Children of the Corn 1? No, I had not. Did you know a Children of the Corn actually existed? Uh, yes, um, but I was not exactly sure of the premise of it until I watched this movie. Amy, had you seen Children of the Corn? Sean, I live in Iowa. (laughs) It was a rite rite of passage. (laughs) We all had to watch it. Yes. Uh, the original Children of the Corn came out in 1984, based oh. off of a, a short story by Stephen King. Uh, as everybody takes their inspiration from from <laughs> Stephen King in some way when <laughs> it comes to horror. Prolific author and yeah, driver of craziness. Really hates the Children of the Corn movies. <laughs> he hates everything. It's fine. It's <laughs> <laughs> he, he just that he happens to be right sometimes when he hates something. That's right. <laughs> like, it's it's this and Steve and Stanley Kubrick. He hates them both. <laughs> But um, this movie, <laughs> you know, and you know how I feel, I, and, and our cousin Jeff knows this as well, Fuzzy knows this, I hate horror films, mm-hmm. hate them, and I wasn't scared once <laughs> no. during this film. <laughs> No. This is a movie that really wants to scare you. The first moment, they're showing you corpses, just immediately, <laughs> just immediate corpses. <laughs> Uh, and they're like the least frightening corpses you've ever seen right? in a movie. <laughs> like, no, I mean, one swings down, tries to jump scare you, nothing. nothing. Right, yeah. It's just so nothing. poorly shot that there's no tension, no suspense whatsoever, just corpse from the ceiling. I think what this film was missing was that saxophone sting that we get in every other 90s film. <laughs> that would have changed everything, you know? <laughs> Especially during yeah. the moist sex scene, but we'll get to that. Imagine oh, yeah. the lethal that weapon sax when the body drops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Noir <laughs> um, Everybody in this film was very 90s Yeah Very 90s in every way Men with bangs um, oh, So many bangs <laughs> We were Like I was telling MJ It's like <laughs> The lead black haired dude Is like every kid on TikTok right now Oh yes Looks Everybody has that horrible mullet And that horrible look to them right now And they're they're all freaky, but I mean, it makes sense because like, we we came to call him Cozy Goth. At the cozy, end. Go- yes. he was very Cozy Goth. <laughs> cozy Goth. Um, I'd, I'd have to point this out because I thought this was kind of funny. So you know, there's there obviously there is well, there's a, the forty five year old, thirty four year old in this movie, <laughs> and uh, of course we set that up for him to have sex with a, mm. a woman that they just met by a bus. I still don't know how they even came together. Yeah, but no. um. Her, Why I did was she still the bus crash? I, I, yeah, I, I, long I, after everyone else had left. It, it's very the, the start of this film is very very confusing. I'm and, still confused. And why was the why was the boy with her? That is again. So I think because we kept I, talking during that part. I think <laughs> I think I understand sort of what was happening. So like the kids in Gatlin in the first film murdered all the adults. All the adults who we, I guess, see in that house in the basement at the start of the movie. Oh. So apparently at the start of the movie, we're in Gatlin, Nebraska. Right. And we've moved to wherever Nebraska this is next. Something like, humming, Hemingford. 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 Next door to, to them. Uh, the families of Hemingford are taking in the kids from Gatlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, because apparently nobody buys the idea that they b- killed all their parents, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. They just don't think they did it. Uh, <laughs> the kids are terrifying looking. They, are all, they walk like, around these just haunted like haunted murderous souls. Just they, <laughs> they walk in a group, like they are always in a like little group, staring dead eyed at something. You so, only see one of them separately from the other that's one. True. <laughs> that's true. But the other ones are like all sewn together. <laughs> So they're all loaded on a bus, and I guess they're being taken to Hemingford, but they already appear to be in Hemingford. Yeah. Because they all just immediately get off the bus and go with the adults in Hemingford to their homes. But And then they found a cornfield. All the journalists yeah. are in Hemingford, where the kids are, when they should be in Gatlin investigating the murder, right? Yeah. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. I think. I don't know if that's true. Here's the thing. I don't know if the person who wrote this movie actually saw the first Children of the Corn. <laughs> he wrote somebody's fan fiction about it. <laughs> this is not canonical. Not canonical. Like, the, the, the first film was like about kids who killed 
adults uh-huh. because and there there was a demon and like the, one of them was like demon possessed and used the demon's powers to kill adults and make a sacrifice to whatever their god is for whatever fucking reason. Here, right. <laughs> and you can, this is how I think that they could tell that no, the person who wrote this didn't see the original. The first kill in the movie are just two random dudes from, who are television reporters, <laughs> and actual corn kills them. Actual corn, like real actual eggs. corn stalks come out of the ground. <laughs> one slices the dude's neck, and the other one just shoves this himself right just, into his chest. A corn stalk just goes flying through the window of his car and just, just <laughs> impales him. The corn is pissed. <laughs> So, so the is. corn commits actual murder in the first two Literally movies. Literally killed okay, by corn. Now, see, this would have been a great through line through the rest of this film, but that's the last time the corn kills anybody. Yes. Which is a huge letdown. We think. So because technically, again, we do... they're the final sacrifice, <laughs> I, I think. Oh, well, we do get corn's yeah. eye perspective through, <laughs> we think. It's all through, like, that iMovie lens, too. <laughs> the weird, like, yes. well, you know, green and red kind of... <laughs> So our protagonists are this journalist and his son. Uh, Who hate th- each other. 34-year-old journalist. 45-year-old. <laughs> 17-year-old son. Because he, he made a mistake and had, had a kid at 17. <laughs> <laughs> he basically told him that, too. Yeah, he yes. said, you like, were a mistake. It was a mistake. So, I, I mean, made a whatever. mistake, and you're here Love now. Love you. <laughs> Sorry. <Sorry. laughs> Dad and son have this very, very argumentative, awkward back and forth throughout the entire movie. They have no chemistry whatsoever. No. You can tell they, they're like just no effort at all to make them seem like they're at all related. Right. No. Uh, they don't look anything like each other. <laughs> like, I mean, the only thing they have in common is the '90s hair. That's pretty much it. <laughs> It's everybody just a loaded face Vigo Mortensen. We are not t- casting director did not do any hard work on this. Just the first no. two guys through the door. Your father and son just get the fuck out of my office. That's true. That's true. <laughs> the father works for some tabloid. He's there to investigate the murder in Gatlin. Even though again they're staying in Hemingford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the kids from Gatlin are in Hemingford and they begin murdering the adults again because the corn tells them to. The demon in the corn. The tells demon them. in the corn. He who walks behind the, the rose. Oh, thank you for clarifying <laughs> that. When he, when he kept saying, I'm like, who's he? <laughs> who's he that was about? a concept from the first film, was that they kept referring to he who walks behind the I corn. I vaguely so recall that. The yeah. screenwriter eventually watched the first film. Yeah. <laughs> They started it's in like the middle of, of the film on TVS oh, one shit, day. Oh, shit, the corn like, didn't kill him? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta change this whole thing now. I'm keeping the first part. I was fuck gonna it. say, why not? Let's see. Yeah. I'm watch this later. Uh, just a little bit later. Well, oh, I think no. it, it's like, a, it's it's night, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of on par with horror films to have the second one always suck and not have anything to do with the first one. So... I'm just well, we'll get to the. I've got an origin story for how the fuck this piece of shit came about. I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, uh, the the investigation begins with him basically just walking up to people and being an absolute prick. Yeah, just oh, yeah. being an asshole. <laughs> Meanwhile, does he talk to the kids once? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. To the point where MJ, you said at one point. Can anybody else see the kids? No, because it seems like there's only these two old ladies that can actually see the kids, <laughs> and the rest of them are just like... like but they're uh, old, so they, everybody thinks so they're delusional anyway. Yeah. Every scene, every scene where somebody's about to die, like, all the kids stand in a cluster <laughs> as close as possible to each other, <laughs> saying nothing. With these most, like, weird faces <laughs> on dead, ever. Dead face. Just dead admitting face. that they're about to kill somebody. Yep. Just openly. And nobody thinks this is weird. Nope. Not the journalist. Not his son. Nobody thinks this is strange except for the old ladies who they kill. And they, they keep showing up at like all the deaths, and it's like, yeah. oh, there they are again, <laughs> little rapscallions. Again, nobody finds this odd at all. No, no. nobody no. has a human reaction to this at all. Like, not even a, like a sideways glance. Nope. I, okay, so k- d- does your notes denote anything about being Amish? Because again. <laughs> They all have Amish names. Mordecai and Jedediah Micah. and Isaac and like so I'm getting all of that, but and they're all dressed like they're, you know, living in Utah right now. Um <laughs> which again was not the style because if you see Christy Clark in this film, you know what the nineties style was back then. I mean mm. it was hot. Yeah. But high waists. High wa- very high waist. <laughs> you kids in your high waisted shorts. Um but she had the lace under under shorts, which I really again I, I loved that look. But I think her outfit there was good. Like, yeah, that was a good outfit. Was, well, I mean, again, that's that's what was really popular back then too. 
back in ye old 90s. But um, I <laughs> All still... shorts had to be above your belly button yeah. and just below your boobs. I like it like where I sit down and it just goes right into my sternum. I like it right about there. <laughs> So, and I, my favorite was, and we you will meet a Native American guide in this film <laughs> whose pants basically go up to his nipples. His name is racism. His name um, is racism in this film. <laughs> casual racism. Oh, my God. Professor. Of professor of casual professor, racism. Casual racism. <laughs> Actually, God, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, he because he is Native American, he's going to take us on the tour of this film. And he has all the wisdom. He has all the wisdom. Of... The corn pass. Uh huh. Because he's Native American. <laughs> <laughs> or, or does he just is he just really smart and determines that this is all just a delusion brought on by bad corn? That's that, well, that, and he does it bring was, that up it later. It was a thought. It was a thought. So and I, I, I'm trying to understand the plot. I really am. The the people in Hemingsburg Heming, way, Heming, <laughs> whatever the fuck it is, <laughs> Habsburg. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. they have a, like a whole storage of bad corn that is like creating a toxic thing that like can make you delusional if you're breathing, which of course they pick up, they touch, they uh -huh. practically rubbing it in of, their mouth, like, in and out. The, the journalist and the, and the Native American professor, uh, they're they're right there, and yeah. they're talking about how this corn is bad and it's causing all these delusions. And I thought maybe then the sheriff comes along and tries to kill them. I thought. Okay, so they're trying to cover up this toxic corn. <laughs> but yeah. is that what they're trying okay. to do? And I... then they kind of disprove... No, the Native American later said, no, I think it's God now. It's God that did this. It's God. God. <laughs> I think you were trying to go too intellectual with this film <laughs> and make it make sense. When it... When it, it, it doesn't. Even the act... Even the characters understand that it makes no, no sense. sense. Well, the I mean, sheriff knew it made no sense. <laughs> Professor Casual Racism knew that there was definitely <laughs> no sense. And my, my oh. favorite thing, too, is like to point out just how white this cast is. And, of course, the one Native American who says, Hey, this is kind of fucked up. Something's happening. He's like... White guy's like, well, you fucking delusional man. <laughs> Have you not learned anything in the past about Native Americans when they show up in a white movie? <laughs> My God, we've been... Nothing we... else, watch a movie, Come man. On. <laughs> they all have mystical powers. They all are They can tell right. what's going to happen. Every one of them is a shaman. <laughs> Every one of them paints on a rock somewhere. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And then disappears into the distance. And the white people are always just total assholes, which I think is very yeah, umbrella. That, that's and, very true. And they wonder why casual racism is passed on from exactly. generation right. to generation. Like, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah, no, it yeah, really yeah, is. It really is. Yeah, it really we, got, is. we got visual proof. Yeah. <laughs> My source is Children of the Corn, too. Like My source Hulu. is every 90s movie. Every, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so true. So many white people. Chinese. And the black sassy character, <laughs> and one Native American mystical that has to be there to help you. But yeah, I mean, it, it does tick all the boxes. This film, yeah, so. it got everything in it. Well, it doesn't have the sassy it, black person, but it should. It, no, we are missing I, that. We all know there's no black people in Nebraska. That's <laughs> oh, the... of course, no. that's so true. <laughs> have you been to Nebraska? Would you want to be Is a black that a person in Nebraska? Are we making a joke? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just... It's terrible. I I feel bad for anybody that lives in Iowa. I mean, anybody who yeah. lives in the in the Midwest. So, so but I'm so they, the adults in Haps Hems Hemingsworth. Uh, are, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep changing the name. <laughs> they they try to kill the journalist and and the Native American professor by framing the corn. Frame yes. the murder. I think yep. that was your biggest laugh, MJ. It was framing fantastic. The corn. <laughs> it was my favorite part of the movie. How do they tell, frame the corn, the scene. though? Tell them the scene. It was so... That he's tying him up, and he's just like, well, you know, this isn't going to make any sense. <laughs> but then again, none of this makes any, any sense. sense. Right. <laughs> and they're just like, why don't you just shoot us? And he's just like, well, that would be traced to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, instead... <laughs> He gets into the big farming machine, um, turns it on, and then grabs a stalk of corn that looks... <laughs> <laughs> holds down the, the gas. like a foot, and holds down the gas with it. 
the framing of the corn. <laughs> it framed the corn for murder. And that's why he got burnt up later by all the kids. Oh, now that makes sense. Revenge for the corn. Uh, revenge for the revenge corn. Revenge for the corn. <laughs> How we re- I mean, and not only that, but like how many times the word corn is mentioned in this film? I don't think they said it enough in the first one, but it's like we have to remind people what movie we're watching. <laughs> Good God! The kids know. do kill a couple of times. Um, yeah, they... <laughs> the old lady in the wheelchair was the best kill. <laughs> I think in any the film greatest, I've ever seen. The greatest kill. There's like this robot movie where like Christy Swanson gets turned into a robot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she uses a basketball to kill Anne Ramsey from Throw Mama from the Train. Yep. She like just takes this basketball, MJ, and bounces it really hard to the ground and then explodes Loads. this old woman's face. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. one of the greatest scenes in movie history. Fantastic. But I gotta say, though, the, the old there. lady in the wheelchair going through the window of the bingo hall. <laughs> I, I was moved to tears. <laughs> so the kids are trying to kill this old woman. They've got an RC car that mm -hmm. they're riding around with, and somehow he hacks her wheelchair with it. Right. Now, this is the old woman <laughs> whose sister had the house drop on her previously, so yes. she knows these kids are fucked up. <laughs> And then you know, and I'm she's the only way you could see them. Yeah. Yes, because the rest of the people on the street <laughs> None think of us it's totally see. normal for yeah. an old woman to be <laughs> yep. randomly going out into the street with her wheelchair, screaming, waving her hands over. <laughs> and those windows in the bingo hall are like so wide. Like, how we're, would you miss in, that? The camera goes inside the bingo hall, and we can hear her screaming outside. Yep. Nobody's noticing in nope. the bingo hall. No, and no, then like maybe the cars, they know their hearing aids on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the cars that are coming at her, get out of the way, lady! Like it's a lady in a fucking wheelchair, you dolt. In defense, old pl old people playing bingo, very intense, very, very focused, very focused. That's that true. Is true. And I mean, he was We're so not here focused, King King so not King focused he. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Search, search, search bingo kink on TikTok. Oh no. I, I I would never be able to go to bingo again. <laughs> so I can't do that. <laughs> I'll look it up for you. Yeah. You go ahead and talk. What was I saying? <laughs> I'm not sure this movie understands physics. No. <laughs> oh, it was oh, I remember. It was um oh, the old man, he um he stood up and bingoed after the lady ran <laughs> through the window yep. and pushed him onto the floor. He was just like bingo? <laughs> And you knew it was coming because yeah. this script was predictable. Like, it's the dumbest spot for a laugh line. That's like true. this old woman has been crushed by a truck mm -hmm. and somehow intact in her in her wheelchair, thrown through a fucking plate glass window. It's the dummy in the wheelchair when it comes flying through. It's, it's like so you, it looks so real. <laughs> I mean, the dummy looked real. You knew the dummy was real. <laughs> looked like the dummy from Mythbusters. Oh my god! <laughs> Not only that, but if you look closely, I don't know if you noticed this. Her wheelchair was mechanical when she's out on the road. Yeah. When it's thrown in the glass, it's not. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can't do that to the good wheelchair. Oh, right. No. We don't have the budget to do that to a good We're wheelchair. We're using that one in the third film, so. <laughs> Go to the good wheel oh, right. and get us a wheelchair. Get us a piece of shit. <laughs> We're just going to We spent through. all the money on the, budge, on the budget on the dummy. Oh, God. Yes. And the wig for the dummy. That was, you know, like, again. <laughs> they didn't even put a wig on it. They no. didn't even put a wig on it. No, it was just. It, I thought there was a wig on the dummy. There, there may have been. It was like a terrible wig. I just, I like that the arms were like Barbies, you know, and just like flopped around when it got inside. Oh my god. <laughs> grandma. Here comes Grandma. <laughs> grandma got run over by a truck. By a truck. <laughs> it's a and fucking reindeer. Tossed through the no. bingo hall window. Truck. Because of a bunch of kids, I don't know. Yeah, but there's some people who would want to go out Born that kids. way. You know, at least she landed in the bingo hall. She was heading there anyway. <laughs> she died as she lived. <laughs> She's playing bingo. <laughs> Doing what she loves. <laughs> Just like our Native American professor. Just like that, exactly. Oh, yes. Exactly. <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, the first lady dry, di dies from having a house dropped on her. Yes. Uh, somebody's coming in. Mm -hmm. No, they're not coming in. They're, they're dropping not. off. Okay. Um, <laughs> Keep the dog down. Don't move. Keep talking. <laughs> Sorry. So the old lady gets a house dropped on her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's She was going to take her house and leave. She literally walks up to the entire crowd of people and just says, I'm going to take my house and leave. And it's just like... Yes. <laughs> 
you're just kind of confused. Like, what do you mean you're taking you're your taking house? Taking your house? Like, you're, but then you go you're to her house. It's literally jacked it's up. It's jacked up so to that go. she can put it on a truck and take her house and leave. <laughs> yes, she is moving her whole house <laughs> with her to a new town because of these children. <laughs> yeah, she knows right away. Fuck these kids from Gatlin. I'm out of here. <laughs> like she's just there's just no no chill with her whatsoever. Like no. I know these little fuckers are here to kill me. I'm getting the fuck out of here and I'm taking my house. Like nobody <laughs> thinks it's suspicious that they're the only people that didn't die. <laughs> When the rest of them have been murdered. Who who else murdered them? Did someone come in, murder just them, and leave this weird small group of <laughs> I got you're fine. Yeah. Okay. You guys are weird enough, I don't need to no. <laughs> we don't need to ask any questions, you're fine. <laughs> even the reporters, they're not gonna have any questions for That's... you even though you saw everything that happened in Gatlin. I swear to God, that's why I think they're invisible. They're invisible. <laughs> they are. You can they're only see them. I, I honestly, if you watch this movie again, I wonder if you could see a scene where anybody other than Danny, the, the the kid, the journalist kid, actually can see them. Yeah, like it would actually make more sense that way. I want to see what's on the cutting room floor of this film. <laughs> oh yes. Let's go back and watch again I now. I mean, there's a, there's a scene early on where the journalist seems to interact with Micah. I think. Uh, yeah. 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 But then once yeah. Micah is possessed, which happens immediately after mm -hmm. that, can anybody see him? Yeah. Well, okay. So here's the other thing, too, that I was questioning is like, the kids are all weird at the beginning of the film. Right. Yes. And then, then Micah gets, uh, the, the corn, like, basically rapes Micah going through the, the corn field. He goes to hell. Goes to hell, exchanges <laughs> some bodily fluids. Yeah. He, uh, then he, all of a sudden, he, then he gets, he, he's pixelated, then he's put back together. Like the lawnmower man. Right. Oh, God, but the effects. Mm. Yeah. Um, so they're all weird as hell before. Then they're all weird as hell after. Yes. Micah doesn't really change much. Well, he, no. he just, like, he gets his voice pitched a couple times. Yeah, but he quotes scripture a lot more. He didn't yeah. really say he that He's a dinner. lot more theatrical. He, he was very quiet before it, and then he's very loud. Then he gets, yeah, and then his voice <laughs> deepens towards the end there, too. Well, he gets pitched. Yeah, his oh, voice becomes pitched. pitched when he's fully possessed. Oh, <laughs> that was a great scene. <laughs> that was a great scene. <laughs> Micah great is dressed scene. in his uh, cozy emo Cozy, look. Cozy, cozy goth. goth. Cozy goth. Cozy goth look. Cozy goth. He's got Mustard, his little cozy like a, little... It's like a mustard, like, <laughs> gown over his button-up mock turtleneck. It's like a, it's like a black... smock, Yeah, really. it is. Well, yeah. smock. <laughs> Like a cozy a smock. smock. I mean, yeah, I could wear that today and get away with that. <laughs> Did he? Not really. No. He's wearing all black and then cozy smock cozy at the smock. end over the black. <laughs> Which, by the way, nobody weirded out by the fact these kids never changed their fucking clothes the entire fucking movie. No. They never changed their clothes. I just keep thinking, like... They don't shower. You, no, and, and, and so many of them don't have shoes on. Get a tennis <laughs> shot. And that one little girl's carrying around that little doll that just, I swear to God, has, like, diphtheria <laughs> all over it. <laughs> Filled like to the brim with cholera. <laughs> terrifying. It's so scary. Absolutely terrifying. Oh she waits God. until they kill Dr. Applebaum, or whatever the fuck his name is. Dr. Applebee's. Applebee's. <laughs> whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> when you're here, you're family. She waits, <laughs> she waits to use the doll then, and just starts pulling the string on the doll, and the doll talks now. That, okay, so, what, yeah, when they kill him, and then like, she puts that, that little sucker in his like, mouth? Like, wouldn't that be, like, yeah, she puts the sucker mm -hmm. in his mouth. But if they're yeah. Amish... If you're positing that they're Amish, then why does she have that? That's technology. I mean, they, it, they, were, they also had the RC car, which... Good point. That's true. They're not they Amish. They wouldn't be Amish. They can't be Amish. And did they bring these toys with them from their original houses? It's an, it's a question. I, also, yeah. where, why didn't Hemmingsburg have, un, had, have only one child in it before they arrived? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, one there's child. only one child, who's the, the love interest for Danny. Yeah. They just, just they needed someone outside of the corn children for him, I guess. Who who, who is nearly who is nearly getting us all convicted of child pornography. That's by the true. Way. Oh, yes. That's very but, true. <laughs> there's a scene where her shirt comes undone, and it's very 
none of our business. I felt I felt uh, I felt I was taking part in a crime for you a moment. Should, I, yeah. I I I think we all had to look away, but I mean, I had friends I, I that dressed like that all the time. I think she was overage, but it, it's a, it was it, canonically speaking, it she was not. It was Christy area. Clark. Yeah, I think she was twenty or twenty one when she made this movie because she was on Days of Our Lives. Better. Yeah, but I mean, still, still, yeah. she's portraying a teenager. She you is. could tell. Yeah. yeah. yeah she, yeah, she just wants to go, which I think she would have fit in with in New York, like when they if he would have taken her back. And he's not <laughs> from New York, by the way. <laughs> would she fit in because they don't have any waterfalls? That's unlike true. Nebraska's That's waterfalls. True. Oh, the the great the wa- waterfalls of Nebraska. <laughs> Where so. she see she goes to take <laughs> she apparently takes showers at the watering hole. Yeah. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> oh, the, the the whole with idea. Shoes on. With, oh God, I was just gonna say that wearing socks and Reeboks. You you, until, you took off your shirt. You couldn't be bothered to take your shoes off in the water hole, you fucker. Until she goes to sit on the dock, then she takes her shoes off. Stop it! Yes. Well, his and again, I still think that he swam in those jeans. And if he did, <laughs> I pray he for totally all the chafing did. in the fucking world on you. He did swim in those Ooh, jeans. D- these. That's why his dad asked him, "Why are you so wet?" And oh, he could say to him, "Dad, why are you? Why so are wet? you so wet?" <laughs> Seriously. It's like somebody went in with like a spray bottle when they were doing that sex is, scene. First of all, he is just it's a clammy God. gentleman to begin That's with. That's true. Well, he's thirty. He's thirty-four. Thirty-four. So in quotations, he gets 34. so sweaty at thirty-four. <laughs> he is clammy all the time. He but is. then they have the wettest sex the, scene: like, the journalist and the lady who runs the B and B. Angela Casual is her name, by the way. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Her last name's Casual. <laughs> Seriously. Said it right oh here. What? Angela Casual. Angela Casual. Is that why she had the shirt on? She's said, so like, casual? Cause something, it said like that. Oh, did it? it? I think it said yeah, something about being it... casual. Oh. Like some kind of play on casual sex on her shirt, but it's, it's about her B&B. Here. You don't believe me. <laughs> I, did, I didn't I even be- know her name was Angela. So Angela I mean, <laughs> Casual. Wow. Yeah, it's true. That's that is true. accurate. I know. Uh, I know. Casual. Uh, Angela Casual. <laughs> casual and, sex with the and, random people. And beige, moist dad have the wettest <laughs> sex scene in history. It's I swear, somebody dumped a bucket on them. They did. Before they had sex and then they went to bed and fucked. I still think it was like spray bottle. Like they just went in like <laughs> misting. All around the room. Ooh, so that much. Little, isn't that a little much? Like, no, it's fine. No, it's Just fine. Fucking shoot this thing. We only got we got ten minutes. Shoot the fucking thing. It's so hot in this bedroom <laughs> right now. And again, it looks like they're making love on grandma's bed because, like, it, it, back in that, you know, the first the, of all, who has sex at a B and B? Well, just, I, well, I mean, again, hate to kink shame you here. <laughs> <laughs> I only have sex at B&B's. Search TikTok B&B <laughs> fetish. <laughs> Must have floral bedding <laughs> on mission-style furniture, if we can. <laughs> beautifully made. Beautifully hand-carved. Oh, no God. accoutrements after nope. 1960 <laughs> in the room when, so, when I do it. So much moisture the only way I can get a, The only way I can reach climax. <laughs> As if the room feels dated pre-1960. I want to look over and see, like, a painting of a teddy bear. (laughs) Clown photos in the hallway. Oh, Oh, no. Everything framed with, like, brass. And beige. And beige. Brass and beige. Oh. God, I feel like I just went back in time. (laughs) I didn't see shag carpeting, but... No, I saw green carpeting, which, again, whenever you have green carpeting and, like, wainscoting... Around the like the, the the room, you know you're trapped in the nineties. No one wants green carpet now. My grandmother has green carpet. My no one Deb, wants green carpeting now. She put it. She and she she put purposely it in, put it in there. She put. I think she put. I don't know if she put it in. I, but I think they've been there for a really long well, time. Well, that would make more sense. Like you just don't want to do anything because you're lazy about it. You know what turns people on? Green a carpeting. Lot, a lots of dead bodies falling. Around That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. at the time when you want to get very wet and bone. Oh, <laughs> people are the, the dead... town smells like death. But let's go fuck real quick. Just I've seen nothing but corpses for days. I need to fuck <laughs> corpses That's... for days. Now that's a movie I'd see. <laughs> Sexy corpses for days. <laughs> Like, uh, I'm gonna go Tina. brag about this. <laughs> exactly, it's totally Tina. I'm gonna go brag about this to my Native American boy professor boyfriend. 
<laughs> they had more chemistry than him and the they girl. Did. Like, they did. They, they had more time together. They had yes. more scenes. Little life partnering happening. They're, they're <laughs> he, walking through, you know, brooks and meadows together. And he died the, in his arms. No, he, was, did. Yeah, he did. He did. It's romantic. <laughs> He did. <laughs> the Native American professor gets shot by an arrow because casual racism. Casual racism. Yep. <laughs> and he he comes back to life briefly to save everybody uh-huh. he, by by capturing Micah's uh, cozy sweater in in the combine. Right. And <laughs> so this Native American professor, <laughs> whose whose life is not very well established beyond the fact that he is a university professor. Yeah. Who happens to be Native American. And the only smart person in the film, by the way. Only smart person. He's the only one who knows what's going on. Yep. So after he dies, they put him on a on a stack of corn (laughs) and bury corn around him. (laughs) And light his corpse on fire. (laughs) Don't don't call his family. I get that they can't report his death because the sheriff's dead now, too. <laughs> the medical examiner's dead. Nobody's there. But, like, yeah. you could just take him back to the city he was living in. Maybe take him to the university. I don't know. He has a yeah. cute little apartment right around the corner. <laughs> Maybe. His, his six kids are waiting. Where the fuck is <laughs> Where, dad Where's been? dad? He went to go look into that bad corn. Oh, I swear to in God. In and It's like, oh, Hemsworth. man. They tried to... <laughs> Harmontown. <laughs> Harmontown. <laughs> <laughs> they keep trying to like <laughs> swear to god if they try to give him a dry viking funeral he'll be so pissed off <laughs> I just it's uh, it's how he would have gone it's how he w- right. he would have wanted it that way i've known him for 2 days don't worry about it we've known each other for 2 days he lived how he died hey. You know, they were in love, so it's different. <laughs> Time I, is different I think in this he'd universe. Know if, how, yeah. <laughs> I think he'd know how his lover would want to Because, I mean, the be. girl also loved him. That's so. true. He made a will. <laughs> 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 he, he had an end of life days, plan. Forty-eight fucking hours. <laughs> that, he, that he gives to this journalist he just met, <laughs> who works for the World Examiner, by the way, <laughs> a rag mag. Yeah, his dad works for a rag. Which I love. <laughs> I love that he called it that. I mean, that's yeah. what we used to call it. That's what teenagers wears. called it back in the day. God. Those rags. Rags. Did we really call Because <laughs> <laughs> no. I used to read those and think that most nobody, of the stories were real. Nobody talks like people talk in this rag movie. <laughs> they, can't, they can't see children. They don't no. talk right. In the 90s, their white people just created their own language. At certain points. Because yeah. they needed their own heritage. <laughs> People in this town, their noses just explode, they just do. randomly. Yeah. I, and again, like, so, yeah, and when you brought disturbing. up the, like, this, this guy who actually finds these dead bodies in the beginning of the film, again... And it's his only rule. Yeah. Like, apparently yeah. he went to Gatlin, found the bodies, mm-hmm. helped bring the kids back to Hemingsburg way <laughs> town. Town. <laughs> and apparently in revenge for him finding them, they give him this endless bloody nose that his nose, his face just fucking and explodes with ears, blood. It, 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 that I think that was probably the grossest part of this film, actually, was that part. But I, yeah. why? But why was it gross? No, why did they do that? Oh, that's right. Because so so it's Micah. It's our little TikToker in the back there, and he he, he had something whittled, and yeah. he just kept like they, like it's whittling. Like a little back. man that he whittled, whittled and it was like a, and he just like kept a, stabbing it in like the a nose. voodoo doll. like a voodoo yeah. doll made of wood, and just carving into his nose like constantly. And carving I don't think that's how that nose. works. No, <laughs> you have to have. Don't you? Have to, I think you have to have a personal object. Yeah. of yeah. the person to. Put on a voodoo doll. He stole wood from his house. He just like cut <laughs> he, out a piece of wood. He stole one of those wisps of hair off of his off the top of his head that he was pretending were just, hair. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> Good job, dude. <laughs> Uh, I just take this one hair and I wrap it around my head a few times like fucking cotton candy on my head. Well, can we can we just can we talk about the acting too because we keep talking about about like we keep going back to Micah who is mm-hmm. our our little our antagonist. Our yeah. He is chewing the scenery in this film. Oh my god, he is he is living every moment of Every this. moment. And you, again, I think that's the only film on his acting reel, don't you? Like he just puts that one main scene, that one major scene. It's like, he'll play evil forever. Dye that kid's hair black till he's 50. (laughs) (laughs) What is he doing now? I've got to (laughs) know. Isn't he wearing hats now? You know what we saw? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> find, a, find his name and, and uh, Ryan Bullman. Ryan Bullman. Ew. Um, actually, he's, he, he's a nice looking man. His hair's not black anymore. That's good. But again, he's probably uh, our age now. He actually, I believe he is. He is. Well, no, he's fifty. 
He's older than us. Wow. But still, looking pretty good for 50. He's got an e-boy haircut in a couple of these pictures. Actually, he is he is an e-boy in this film, <laughs> isn't he? Yes. Total e-boy. Like, yes. oh. Wow. I'm telling you. He was There's... in Children of the Corn, The Granny. That's interesting. He was in a sequel to this? No, he no. was in this, The Granny. Oh, okay. <laughs> that great movie of Patrick Swayze, Forever Lulu, he was in that. Never heard of it. No, me neither. Uh, Never Ending Story 3, <laughs> No Vacancy, True Blue, Only the Strong from 1993 with Mark Ooh. Mark DeMarco. We've got that one in our future. Oh, what do Ooh. we? <laughs> oh. oh, he was in Black Dawn with Steven Seagal. I think everybody was in something with Steven Seagal. If they were just character actors back then, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it said he was in Friends, but it's it's five hour Friends. It's... <laughs> yeah. Something called Kung Fu Magoo. <laughs> <laughs> you just found our bonus podcast. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, it's animated. That's not going to be any fun oh, if we boom. can't see what he looks like. Yeah. yeah. If that were a live-action movie, we were watching the shit out of that. Well, there's there's a film called At Home with the Webbers that he no. was in in 1993. That one looks interesting. Terrible. Oh, Jennifer Tilly and David Arquette and Jeffrey Tambor are in that. Wow. That's that's incredible. That is incredible. Oh, Robbie Benson. Anyway. So he went on to bigger things, is what you're saying. What's think, he doing today? Oh, uh, I don't see I think he's anything. just wearing hats oh, now. I think the, <laughs> he just, he he's just, just wearing stopped. hats. He just stopped working at some point. I think at the I think the last film that I saw in here was 2017. Okay, I, this, I, so. I saw 2020. Oh, interrogation. All right, he's working. He's Good working. For him. Good for him. Something. I just you know, uh, not a lot of people could survive this. That's true. <laughs> this performance. That's true. It's good that he hung in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> He's like, he's like discount Dave Matthews. I just feel like he got arrested, and that's the picture they used. <laughs> this is 50. Oh, God. Oh, God. It actually says that in the photo. It does. Oh. Just imagine. Just imagine. Oh, no. discount, A mugshot. Discount Dave Matthews mugshot. <laughs> Wish.com Dave Matthews. <laughs> We've got Dave Matthews at home. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never get old to me, I'm sorry. No, it get. really won't. <laughs> so, how did this co film come to be, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, a, an executive for New World Pictures, which owned the original Child Children of the Corn, Larry Cuppin, he picked up the filming rights, and he did this for anything that vaguely had a following. So he had this, he followed it, he, he, had, he had Hellraiser 3, <laughs> he had... <laughs> He had, uh, let's see, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive 2. I've never heard of Wanted Dead or Alive 1. He had Angel 4. <laughs> Angel 4? Crimes of Passion 2. <laughs> oh my god. Avenging Angel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, he just went out and picked up just the crappiest titles he could find to make sequels of. And it didn't matter if anybody had actually seen the original or not when they're making it. <laughs> I think that's the mark of a true director. <laughs> Don't you? He was the executive producer. Oh, well, of a true executive producer. That's the mark right there. <laughs> the director of this film, you want a piece of trivia to wrap around back to Le Leprechaun. Oh, it's Dave Price, isn't it? Oh. The, le the director of this film was the mentor to the guy no, who directed he wasn't. Leprechaun. Stop the it. The guy from Leprechaun worked on this movie as a second unit guy and then made Leprechaun, which came out before this did. Makes sense. Oh. <laughs> Makes sense. How you could do anything in the 90s, couldn't you? <laughs> what a heady time. Anything is possible. <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> Only in the 90s. <laughs> Only in the 90s. Anything is possible. Isn't that crazy? I did not know that. I don't know what I'm going to do with that information now, though. <laughs> Just call somebody up and share this. Dude, listen to what Sean told me today. You're never going to believe it. So. <laughs> so anecdote. Great. Story time. <laughs> yes. Larry mm. Cuppin is his name. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, it's not. It, uh, oh. <laughs> I was doing a bit. Oh, God. For fuck's sake. I was really enjoying my Diet Pepsi. I'm sorry. <laughs> Story time. <laughs> Fuck your story times. Yeah, so I guess that's it. I mean, you've got to have some more thoughts, right? 
though, about the film. <laughs> yes, please. Um, there are so many thoughts about the film. I, I think, you know, if you think about it, too, it's like, it looks like it was filmed where Leprechaun was filmed, doesn't it? Actually, there's a note about that. <laughs> Actually, Seriously? I did see something like that. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, this was filmed back to back with something. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to find it. Go on with your conversation. I'll find it, see if I can find the information. Do you? Because it looked really dusty. Every house looked like you were going to move it to another town. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if that's what they did afterwards in Leprechaun. (laughs) It does kind of look like Leprechaun. It has nothing to do with... The note I saw didn't have anything to do with Leprechaun. This was shot back-to-back with Hellraiser 3. (laughs) What does that have to do with anything? (laughs) Nothing, but it's funny. They just went from Hellraiser 3 to this. (laughs) To this. (laughs) With with the same crew. You know know what? I think what, what always put a bad taste in my mouth over the years with films like this, and actually a lot of these films that took place out in these kind of rural, like, little small towns, is that any time I tried to make a friend and bring them to this town, they, they would think that this was going to happen to them. <laughs> <laughs> they always made a Children of the Corn reference. Um, t- until we got a Casey's, it, I swear to God, <laughs> that's how it felt here. Because otherwise you're going down to bowls, the just, local store, yeah, and buying so jeans much, and a gun. There's so much corn everywhere. <laughs> so much corn everywhere. <laughs> our, our local elementary school is surrounded by a corn It was field. actually, it, it used to be surrounded more by corn until people started building nice houses. <laughs> Gentrification sucks, man. <laughs> there's a nice cornfield right, in, right down the side of the school. That's where I just run. I just run out of school and just run into the cornfield. And you just keep <laughs> living in the cornfield. <laughs> Just go back to the corn kids. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the the corn jokes when you live in the in the Midwest oh, just never get old. God. They never get old. My, they don't age at all. I used to have a friend that that's all he was. He was like, so you got it's just corn up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> never heard that one before, dickhead. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, great, God. great humor. Great. Come here, we got some corn for you, right oh, through your oh, chest. And then I just started sending him corn-related objects, like, from there on out, too. Then you framed the corn for doing it. I framed the corn. Every time you say that, I keep picturing, like, framing corn, like, in a shadow box. Like, I'm sure somebody art. does that. I'm sure, well, I, you have to imagine every house in this town, at least, has something that has corn on it. <laughs> so I'm thinking of, of a painted picture of corn. Of, of corn. I framed this painting oh. of corn. Yeah. For you. For, I did this for you. Just for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know just where it'll go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think as far as hilarity... It's very funny. It's very funny. I don't think it's intended to be. I would no. hope not. I don't think any of it is. Even the bingo joke is just kind of like, that's just something that somebody on set thought would be funny in the moment. Yeah. It doesn't fit yeah. the movie it at all. It doesn't fit it at all. No. And thus it's not funny at all, because no. the movie doesn't have any jokes in it. See, and this is why elderly people hated scary movies for so long, because you just, you just fuck with them in this, <laughs> this kind of shit, you know? And then they're worried that that's going to be their fate one day. <laughs> Amish just... kids just chasing after you with a little toy car. I mean, yes, my God. Killing Hacking the your wheelchair. Person. Right. <laughs> Damn kids with their wheelchair hacks. <laughs> That's also just that's not how that's not how electric wheelchairs work. It's just not. No. You can't just take it over with an RC car. But I, I mean if I see I thought maybe the RC car was like caught in the wheel and it was moving it. That would have made more sense, but eventually it looked like he actually <laughs> took control he, of he, it. Literally like he slips a button on his thing like yeah. the, the the man behind the corn, the one who walks behind the rows or whatever. <laughs> Like, gave him the ability to, like, hack an RC car to turn it into, uh, to give it a button. Yeah. That can, he can turn on to take over one specific wheelchair. That's not and how kill it works. one specific and old where woman. did he learn how to do well, that? Well, he's omniscient, though, isn't he? <laughs> hell. He was in hell. He was in hell. He went to hell. But only for, like, three <laughs> seconds. <laughs> you're, 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 are you gatekeeping hell? hell? Dude, I'm just saying, like, I, Dean Winchester was there for 45 years. <laughs> That hey, doctor. The doctor was there for a million. So I mean, that's true. This guy's in there. Oh, you're in there for three minutes, and then all of a sudden, now you know everything about hell. I mean, gatekeeper of hell. I'm the, the literal gatekeeper of hell. Yeah, I mean, but he was my favorite character, though. 
Micah. Was Micah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that I makes just, sense. I think he, he. I'm more of a Danny. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I could see you wearing that New York jersey. <laughs> to, let, to tell everyone that you're from New that York. you're from New York. <laughs> and he can, nothing else about you says New York. Every time he says it, he's like, I'm from Long Island, New York. Like, he's like <laughs> the most Midwestern New Yorker you've ever met in your life. That's not how you sound. He's just got corn blonde hair, a corn. farmer's tan. <laughs> he, yeah, I mean, he goes to North Scott High School. Come on. That's that's where we went to high school. Everybody. I got to get Come back on. to the Bronx, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell everybody that's where I'm from, too. I'm literally just visiting here for 45 years. The girlies, <laughs> the girlies known for two days. Can you take me to New York? <laughs> Dude, we just fucking we met. Just fucking, we had so one obviously. conversation where I almost took your shirt off. <laughs> No, that actually the New York comment was before that. It was before that. Will you take me to New York? I don't know if you're dumber than a box of hammers or if you're, I mean, I don't know anything about, yeah, you're hot, so I'll take you to New York. <laughs> and she apparently doesn't have any family in this town She's either. She has no, no family. <laughs> we don't know where. I think she lives in the waterfall. <laughs> That's no, why she showers there. I, I just feel like she lives in the waterfall. <laughs> She's got a hot moped too, which I love. <laughs> It's so loud. <laughs> it's a motorized bike. It is a motorized it's not, bike. Yes. Not a moped. <laughs> she has a motorized bike. Aww. But it was cute, though. <laughs> and the bus only co only comes to this town on Tuesdays. On Tuesdays. And it was Saturday. Oh, well, yeah, right. You're gonna, <laughs> I want to read a book or something. The next bus comes on Tuesday. <laughs> Here to Hopersville or wherever the fuck we live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Hagerstown, Hagerstown. Maryland. <laughs> no Hamilton Tech University <laughs> I don't know I, I I enjoyed this one I really did this aside from the, the 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 blood coming out of the nose and the ears like I could do without that that was probably the, the grossest scene but aside from that it was just a a, a delight it was an absolute <laughs> delight journalists walking into the coroner's office just touching the body Touch, fingering them <laughs> fingering the body it's just like oh hey <laughs> What, what, he, hey, he literally, yeah, he touched everything in that <laughs> office. Was, is, yeah, just the, touching the bodies. <laughs> he, he's fingering all the all the things on the shelves. <laughs> he helps himself to a lollipop. And wonders why the doctor is hostile to him. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, who, who are you? Why are you in my office? And then they killed had they the had doctor. A, had they had a scene be together before that? No, the doctor, the only other time we saw Dr. Applebee's, because we're all family here, <laughs> um... He he was outside of the bus giving the yeah. like exams, giving all the kids yeah. exams and gave them lollipops and that they so then happy. gave back to him when they killed him. Oh, they gave. <laughs> oh, that was. Oh, that's why she did that. That was sweet. <laughs> the little like girl she's giving back. Yeah, after she kills him, she takes. The, <laughs> after they kill him, she takes the lollipop out of her mouth and sticks it in the doctor's mouth, and, and then, then she, she takes a little baby, her little <laughs> baby doll, and caresses his cheek. <laughs> With we didn't know what that was. Hands. Oh my God. I just I want to buy doll hands just to go do that to people now. Just, just a little moment just, of tenderness <laughs> after the demon made me kill you. She didn't, I didn't want to touch him myself, so I had my dolly do it. Children. <laughs> my dolly felt bad. I didn't. My dolly did. I'm dead inside, but Holly Hobby here. I'm, I'm sorry she talked through all of this. Doll <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, this was definitely in my top three. <laughs> there have only been three. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> four. This is the four. Yeah, oh, there it is. Okay. This is better than Hex. I mean, I think everything's better than Hex. <laughs> I think this is top. I I, yeah, this is top. number one, easily. Leprechaun. Leprechaun body, body of evidence, evidence and then Hex. Yeah. <laughs> I, should, I should be writing this down, because we, we need to make sure that by the end of all of this, we actually can we'll rate them. we have a rank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. am writing about all of these, and they're on on my Twitter and uh, Letterboxd oh. and so on. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you can find it there. I'll yeah, find my written reviews there, and of course the podcast at Everyone's a Critic uh -huh. podcast. And want to talk about next week? What do we have next week? Next week you have your options. Okay. Uh, there's an old lady romantic comedy um, with uh, Ellen Burstyn and Danny Aiello as people who are. It's it's yeah. Ellen Burstyn, Olivia Olivia Dukakis. And one other old lady, all their husbands die in less than a year. Oh. And then they all move on and try and get get fucked again. <laughs> like within a year. Now, 
are the children in this film? Oh, no. It just seems like they're, they're all dropping dead. <laughs> and there's little kids just waiting outside yeah, the Alan Burstyn and meets Danny Aiello, but they, can't, they try to get together and... He can't get it up. Complications arise. <laughs> Wackiness ensues. Okay, first of all, that is a stellar cast. It is. It, it is. is. It really is. These are fantastic actors. Uh, what are my other options? Other options. Uh, Homeward Bound. The nope. Incredible Journey. I hate it. I hate it. Nope. All right. Nope. Loaded Weapon 1. That's too easy. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson, Emilio Estevez, send up of Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Um, Summersby with Richard Gere. Oh, God. Please, can we do a Richard Gere period piece, please? <laughs> Is it like a Civil War movie? It's I I don't know if it's Civil War. <laughs> well, I thought he I think the premise, and I'm just gonna guess this off my top of my head without even looking at it. Okay. I think the premise is he was in the Civil War and everybody thought he died, and then and he comes back. He shows back up. <gasps> I think that now I'm gonna look okay, it up. Okay, now we have to look it up. Because I think I guessed that premise. I'm just so worried that we're gonna fall asleep during that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so fucking it's boring. Be so boring. <laughs> I and I I like Richard Gere, but you know I, I'm not a big Richard Gere fan. I just saw his new movie. Well, maybe I do. I gotta tell you, right what after a I fucking read, piece of shit. I read your review, and then I go onto like MSN's front page, and they're like, "It's the funniest movie of the year," oh. and I'm like, "Wow, Sean really fucking hated that movie." Were you right? John Jack Summersby no. left his farm to fight the American Civil War, and is presumed dead after six years. Uh, despite the hardship of working on the, their farm in Vine Hill, Tennessee, his apparent widow, Lauren, is content in his absence because Jack was an unpleasant and abusive husband. <laughs> <laughs> so she makes remarriage plans. She's going to get married to one of her neighbors, Orrin Meacham, who has been helping her and her young son do the farm work. And then Jack just fucking shows the fuck up. Oh. And he's just a nice, loving guy now. He's just what? the nicest guy. I don't believe that. <laughs> No, I feel like it's going to be he's evil in the end. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Bill Pullman plays Orrin Meacham. Of course because of he course does. He does. Because the, <laughs> of course he does. Could you give me the he's most the Bill guy. Pullman role <laughs> in your film? He's the guy who gets cucked every, every time. Every time. Every time. See Sleepless in Seattle, which we will watch eventually. <laughs> Fucking Bill Pullman. You know, it's not until he gets to be the president where he really gets to show his true colors. <laughs> it's the only time he doesn't get cucked. Exactly. <laughs> Aww. Richard Gere, Jodie Foster, Bill Pullman, James Earl Jones. See, it's, it's, a, it's a good cast. Those are great actors. Arlie Ermey is back. Oh, my God. I feel like we're going to see him a lot this year. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I think, I mean, we're, we're going to fall asleep during it. <laughs> so, what do you think? I don't know. I feel like we got to go. I feel like we got to go with something funny. Something funny? on purpose funny or something <laughs> something that just makes us laugh it doesn't really matter how it makes us laugh it just has to make us laugh and I hate the hiccups I know I the hiccups. so didn't Summersby win an award oh. did Summersby win an award I feel like Jodie um, I mean you got Jodie Foster in there that's uh, Summersby was received generally positive reviews uh, 63% positive from Rotten Tomatoes uh -huh. um Critics praised their acting and chemistry. Hated the ending of the movie, according to this, but it uh, doesn't say anything about it winning any awards. Oh. God, you really would have thought. Well, I think that, once again, we're going to have to surprise the audience because <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't decide. What's your, what's your decision holding you up? That we're going to fall asleep during summer <laughs> movie. Otherwise, I'd watch I mean, I really probably would watch that one, but... I don't know. I just wish we had some sort of slapsticky comedy that wasn't on purpose funny. Hmm. Yeah. Because Loaded Weapon, I just feel like, okay, obvious. But then again, does it hold up? And how racist is it? That, you know? is, a, that is a reasonable, reasonable <laughs> question. Like, just how bad... Does it age like milk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's between those two. Yeah, it's I an, either going to be Summer's Bee or Loaded Weapon. Yeah. Oh, I bet it's going to be cringe. It's going to be so cringe, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, you would say that about Naked Gun. Naked Gun holds up. It does. Naked That's Gun's true. very funny. So does Airplane. Yeah. So, I mean... But nobody talks about Loaded, loaded weapon. weapon. No one talks about that movie anymore. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's going to be, like, really, really sleepy. Or really, really... I wish I hadn't watched this. Funny, Potentially maybe? funny? Potentially. 
Yeah. So yeah, tune in next week for that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to the Everyone's a Critic 1993 podcast. MJ, which way are you leading? <laughs> That's a no. Okay, thank you, MJ. Great contribution. She's already thinking about Summersby. 